Well, hello and welcome, viewers. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've been up to on the C63 for the past couple of days. So check this out. Okay, if you look up top, this will be a quick little rundown of the latest project. I have the upper core support removed so that I could remove the electric fan so that I could access all of these idler pulleys, which I replaced all of them, and the belt tensioner so that I could put a fresh belt on and know that it has good life. In order to do that, you really need, or you, you have to, you have to pull this upper radiator hose off. So you drain the coolant. So I drained probably a gallon and a half or so of coolant out of the old bins. And I got those replaced, those idler pulleys, and I have my new belt. And this is where it gets really exciting. I wanted to show y'all where the oil temp sensor is because that is, I guess, somewhat of a common failure point on these old, these old engines. And it happens to be two problems on my car. It happens to be the oil temp gauge sometimes doesn't work, which was a pretty good sign. And it relates it to another problem I've had where I've been getting oil in the engine harness. And a common source for that is that oil temp sensor. So knowing that it wasn't working on the gauge properly, it would be accurate and then all of a sudden it would show that way too cold. And then it would show correct again. And then it would show way too cold and intermittently do that and you drive the car every day for a while and it, it acts normal, like it's warming up enough that it kind of burns the rest of the oil off probably. So I knew that sensor was bad. And those sensors are relatively inexpensive. But let's crawl up under here and I'm going to show you a little bit of how I got to it and where it is. To answer your, your biggest question most quickly, it is on the driver's side of the engine block right here which would normally be covered up by the AC compressor that I have unbolted and slid forward. In order to do that every skid plate comes out from under the front of the car which should be a given and then there's this cross member support unit right here that holds the steering rack in place. It comes off and then you drop your front sway bar after you disconnect this little level sensor arm right here, so you don't break it, this little plastic arm. Then you take your bottle jack out of your trusty Ram 2500 and you as safely as possible lift your engine up. And that's how I was able to get this bottom bolt, bottom front bolt out of the uh, the bottom front bolt that holds the AC compressor to the block to get it unthreaded from the block enough because it lines up right behind this cross member here. So you get it threaded out until it'll slide, but obviously it won't come out, but it, it's out of the block at that point. And then you can remove the upper bolt and then the rear bolt and then that accesses the oil temp sensor, which is right back there, and I've already unplugged it. It was that yellow plug lead right there. And if you'll use your imagination while you look at this, because it's just going to be hard to tell, there is oil in this plug. So oil was getting through the sensor into this plug and contaminating the entire engine harness which it does that with oil pressure because there's pressure going through the sensor and up through the plug and up through the harness if you're not familiar with mercedes benz or with these problems uh, look into that other places i'm probably not the best source for that but it's, it's something we saw at the dealership fairly regular I noticed it on uh, 
I think I replaced an engine harness. The first one I did was on a GL 550 and it had the same problem. It had gotten so bad that the oil had already made its way to the, EC, to the ECU, so we had to replace the ECU and the engine harness. So anyway, that is how you access that. And then I need to figure out what size wrench goes on that. And then I'll unscrew it, install my new one, put it all back together. Yeah, sorry this wasn't a step-by-step -step video, but all this stuff is really kind of hard to get to, which makes me sound kind of lame, but it makes it really hard to film. So I would just be reaching and talking and going back and forth for tools when it's probably easier to just show you the car taken apart, save a lot of your time, but now you know where the sensor is if you didn't already, and it is possible to fix. If you own or have access to a piece of concrete that's at least the size of your car, that'll make this job easier, but even if you don't, it's not impossible. You can do it on the rocks. Just watch out for snakes, and don't let anything like the engine fall and pinch your hand or anything like that. So thank you for subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.